drug complex and the Rockefeller dynasty merged and formed the wealthiest and most powerful cartel in the world and it was through them that Hitler was financed and brought to power. Hitler's rise to power would have been impossible without the secret financial support of IG Farben. The Nazi state became the means by which the cartel agreements were enforced. This is from the book World Without Cancer, page 286 and 287. Hitler himself stated, I learned much from the order of the Jesuits. Until now there has never been anything more grandiose on the earth than the hierarchical organization of the Catholic Church. I transferred much of this organization into my own party. Isn't that an amazing thing to say? This man, Himmler, was the head of the SS. But friends, his uncle, Himmler, was a Jesuit from oath and induction from the Bavaria of University, uh, the, 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 from the Bavarian court. The SS troops were a Jesuit controlled society and they became the police of the Nazi state. This book, Spoke, Smoke Screens, reveals a tremendous uh, involvement of the Roman Catholic Church in the slaughter of millions of people. Here it quotes Hitler as saying, as for the Jews, I am just carrying on with the same policy which the Catholic Church has adopted for 1500 years. Franz von Papen is quoted as saying again in that book, Smoke Screens, page 20, by Jack Chick, the Third Reich is the first world power which not only acknowledges but also puts into practice the high principles of the papacy. What are the high principles of the papacy? What, what is the plan that the Jewish church has for its enemies? You can see it in the faces of the people in the concentration camps. That nuncio that worked secretly with von Papen became the Pope after Pius XI. Now, Pope Pius XII, supporting Hitler, but in time he saw Hitler's power waning. He was just using Hitler, and in time he turned his attention to the Western world. But what was happening in another country in Europe? Ante Pavelek, the head of the Ustachi state of Croatia, surrounded with Croatian Catholic clergy in April 1942, he was to Yugoslavia what Hitler was to Germany. There in that state, priests became soldiers. And they worked at the most horrible suffering and slaughter and persecution that the world has ever seen from the time of the Dark Ages. People were tortured to death with spoons and knives and forks, forced to eat their relatives. Eyes were torn out of the sockets and wreathed and handed out among the priests. This is 1942, folks. It shows that if she gains power, she will return to the apostasies of the ancient time. This man was responsible for opening up trade with Russia and recognizing a political connection with Rome. He also placed this Masonic symbol on our dollar. Novus Ordo Seclorum, a new world order. The reverse of the seal of the United States of America, according to Manley P. Hall, an expert on Masonic lore, not only were many of the front founders of the U.S. government Masons, but they received aid from a secret and august body existing in Europe which helped them to establish the United States for a peculiar and particular purpose known only to the initiated few. The great seal, says Hall, was a signature of this exalted body and the unfinished pyramid on its reverse side is a trestle board setting forth symbolically the task through the accomplishment of which the U.S. government was dedicated from the day of its inception. Who dedicated this country? Many books have been published now that make it clear what took place during the years after the Second World War. First, the church joined itself to the United States through Cardinal Spellman. Then, Russia, realizing the responsibility that the church had in the Russian Revolution, realized that the entire balance of world power could be swayed by being involved in Vatican politics. So a Catholic post now, Pope now in 1958 comes to the throne in the Vatican. And what does he do? He establishes the great Vatican Council for bringing the governments and the churches of the world into great communist society. They invited priests and... and uh, 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 the reverends and religious leaders from all over to join in their talks. What was happening here was an effort to unite the world and paralyze her enemy. In Catholic Power Today by Avril Manhattan we read, the Catholic Church's offer for reunion to all Christian churches not in communion with her is a magnificent ecclesiastical Trojan horse, a means to penetrate their citadels and accomplish their capture and final capitulation. Catholic Power Today, page 22. And this is how she plans to do it. She will support any military or economic force or movement that would maintain things while she is in power. If she can't accomplish it that way, she'll mobilize her religious and diplomatic power to counteract against 
her opponent in the event she fails to crush it another way. But finally, her last bid is forming an alliance with it, characterizing her joining it. In, a spe in special circumstances, even leading it, as she's doing today in the great movement for peace and disarmament in the world and the ecumenical movement. This is one of her last assaults. She led out in the charismatic movement secretly and in time as it passed the borders of the Catholic Church and Protestants saw that now the Catholic Church was speaking in tongues. These are Catholic priests. Catholics and Protestants together in great revival meetings will be speaking in tongues together. Some of these folks will be speaking in rosaries while the others beside them are speaking in, uh, in tongues. It seems to adapt itself to every religious climate today. Spiritualism has joined Christianity. It was this pope, the next pope to take office, Paul VI, that took over the world in a great movement of ecumenism. He finished up the work of the Vatican II. Here he is uniting himself with the Greek Orthodox Church. And we find that today, because of the great uh, ecumenical movement that was begun and is sponsored by the Roman Catholic Church, the Protestants are paralyzed. They no longer speak out against Rome. This man here is Walter Martin, Dr. Walter Martin. Supposedly, he's a, a great man in the evangelical circles. He accuses the Seventh-day Adventist Church of being a cult because they claim Ellen White is a pope or, or they take Ellen White, he says, as a pope. And yet, he will not call the Catholic Church a cult. He says she's a Christian church today. What is happening to the Protestant world? It was the Catholic Church that opened up her doors and invited the communist heads of state in. Here's President Tito from Yugoslavia in uh, meeting with the Pope at the Vatican. Pope Paul VI became the communist Pope, the Pope of the proletariat, mingling among the workers in the various areas of the world. They even devised an entirely new image of Jesus for the populace now in the Marxist Catholic system. Jesus was depicted as a white-collar worker and posters were put in the factories of the third world countries. In other places, <clears throat> Jesus was depicted as having overalls or with tools in his hands. Christ was now that God that many years before Adam Weiss helped had pointed out that he was. In 1973, this magazine came out on the Jesuits. Here it made it appear that the Jesuit order was in search of a new identity, that they didn't know what they wanted to do, that they were in a state of flux. It shows the Jesuit priests as common, everyday, dressed people. <clears throat> but still, it showed that Jesuits are involved in the various activities of missionary endeavors all over the world. Some, like Nixon aide McLaughlin, are in politics, movie actor O'Malley, and here a congressman Drennan at the Capitol. This is a Jesuit priest named Dan Lyons and a book by John D. McCullum. Here it pointed out that Dan Lyons was an expert on Asiatic affairs and counseled Richard Nixon. It was his counsel to bomb Cambodia that Richard Nixon followed. Here he is with uh, Commander Abrams working in, in, uh, in Vietnam. How far have these men gone? What secret mechanisms are even being worked out still today in politics, in religion, and all over the world? They make us feel like they're looking for a new identity. But friends, they know exactly what they're doing in the great world revolution that's taking place today. This man, the head of the FBI, made it very clear that the communists are deliberately maneuvering among the Negroes to create a situation for outbreak of racial violence to such an extent that it can be turned into a civil war, a civil war on a racial basis. In such a civil war, should they succeed in fomenting it, the communists hope to so undermine the American government and our social structure that they can take over power. In the racial civil war that they envisage, they are sure the Negroes 
will be in the front ranks, the shock troops of the communist revolution. This is quoted from a congressional record, August 7, 1963. Brethren, the spirit of prophecy tells us, and I don't have the quote or the source of the quote now, it's in the White States, but that again, there'll be a racial movement, the army will be called out to put it down, and men will go back into servitude. And the result of it will be a Sunday law. Friends, we're seeing a fulfillment of the spirit of prophecy's prophecy taking place today. In this book, the Negroes in the Soviet America, written by a communist, published in the South, encouraged the Negro people to rise up and form their own country in the South and that under communism they would be exalted to a much higher position in society. This is a communist class that was held in the South. And as you notice on the far right hand corner, you see that is Martin Luther King, a communist being trained to carry on this revolution. And I want you to know right now still that the revolution, communist revolution, the spearhead of it, is the Jesuits in the Roman Catholic Church. I'll prove that to you in a minute. Here he is with known card-holding communists from the conspiracy that took place in Hollywood. Beside him, Sidney Poitier and Harry Balafonte. Violence is being planned today, brethren. I was down in, uh, at the flea market, down in the city, and there uh, a man came up to the table, he heard me talking about prophecy with someone else, and he said, would you tell me something? He said, would you please tell me why the black folks down here in the city are hoarding automatic weapons? Just down the street from me I saw a van pull up and they unloaded boxes of automatic weapons into a garage. What is happening? What are they planning? Brethren, I don't know how long until the, the cities are a hotbed of violence because of these type of plans. But it's coming and Ellen White tells us that it's going to be an overwhelming persecution, relentless in its fury. The Catholic Church is involved in this uh, ethnic ac action publicly. In Africa, she is making the black prelates the only prelates there. So the church will relate to a black church at that point. This gentleman, Pope John Paul I, was in for only 33 days. The reason for this gentleman coming in for only 33 days is that he was the choice of the communist influence. The church had become fearful that Moscow would dominate the church, that she would take over it. Prelates began to move. They worked with the CIA. Cardinal Wyszynski from Poland was summoned to this secret meeting and they decided to plan to get Wotilla in. Wotilla had already been deeply involved in the Vatican II project. He was an extremely intelligent man and he was trained in the field of acting and playwriting. He was the perfect man for the job. He was a Marxist, but he was an anti-Moscow Marxist. And he would be perfect for developing the new brand of Lenin Christianity that they believed was the new age in this world. John Paul in the liberal magazines in this country which we know are controlled by the elements that are involved in world conspiracy set him up as a superstar. 14,000 journalists were accredited to cover his passage through this country. Millions and millions of dollars have been used to place this man in a campaign as a god among the nations today. And the Protestants, where are they? They're completely paralyzed. Protestants for the Pope.